in wherever you are, begin to worship Him. Begin to worship Him. Begin to worship Him. Begin to worship Him. Father, we worship You. We give You praise. We honor You. Thank You for bringing us into a new month. Thank you that it will be a month of awesome favor, a month of encounters. We exalt you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, you're welcome to service this morning from wherever you are. We thank God for your lives. I'm expectant of greater things this month. And I believe that God will do some unusual things in your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want to encourage you to be expectant because God is going to visit you in an unusual way in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, well, uh, we thank God for what he's doing. You're welcome to July. It's a new month. It's the first Sunday of the month. Of July we thank God for how far he's brought us uh, I know many of you are expecting uh, that today will be in, in church because here in the UK officially uh, the lockdown has been released uh, but then we're still making sure that we put in place uh, everything that is needed before we go back to church so we'll let you know at the appropriate time the exact date when we will be uh, having service but in the meantime uh, this is still service going on online and we know that God will bless you mightily in Jesus name Amen well are you ready for the word uh, turn with me please in your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 18 Exodus chapter 33 verse 18 I read this is Moses speaking. Moses said, and he said, I beseech thee, please show me your glory. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm continuing with my series that I have titled, Show Me Your Glory. And this is part three. Show me your glory. And this is part three. This must be the prayer of every believer to experience the glory of God on a daily basis because in this series I'm going to be showing you some very important truths of how God made us and what he made us into amen now a quick question we want to ask is what is the glory of God number one the glory of God is the splendor and the majesty of God. The glory of God is the splendor and the majesty of God. Number two, the glory of God is the manifest presence of the fullness of God. The glory of God is the manifest presence of the fullness of God. Number three, the glory of God is the weight of God, is the weight of God. The glory of God is the weight of God. The glory of God when it comes is heavy. That's why the Bible says that when the glory of God comes, no one is able to stand to minister in the temple. Please understand that Adam and Eve operated in the same level of glory God operated in before the fall. Adam and Eve operated in the same level of glory that God was operating in before the fall. You say, how, Pastor? Because God never made anything inferior to himself. God never made man inferior to himself. Are you following me? So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28 the Bible says that then God said let us make man in our own image did you see that 
let us make man in our own image or in our own glory let us make man so God made man in his own glory according to our own likeness and let them have dominion just as we do over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him male and female created he them amen amen, amen. hallelujah verse 28 the Bible says then God blessed them then God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth so verse 26 makes us to understand that God made man in his own image God made man in the exact replica of himself so that means if God operated in glory God made man also to operate in the same level of glory amen God made man to operate in the same level of glory just as himself are you following what I'm saying because when God made man man became an extension of God here on earth man became an extension of God here on earth man became like an ambassador of God representing God here on earth so in Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 you will notice that after man sinned, the glory of God departed the glory of God departed is called Ichabod that's why the Bible says that then the, the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings now before them before their fall they didn't realize that they were naked so what was covering them then it was the glory of God the glory of God was their covering are you following me and the moment sin came in sin took away the glory last week I explained to you that the devil never steals anything that is not of significance any good thief will tell you when they want to go and steal they want to go and steal something big are you following what I'm saying and last week I showed you five times how Lucifer wanted to steal the glory of God and he said I will ascend unto the heaven I'll make my seat above the heavens I'll be above the stars I want my throne to be above God and so on and so forth so the devil's number one agenda is to steal the glory of God last week I also told you that the reason why most of the time you are under a severe attack is because you were made in the image of God you were made in the glory of God and because the devil can get to God the only way he can attack God is to get through you so the devil has always had always wanted to steal the glory of God so in John 10 10 the Bible says the thief Jesus said the thief comes not but to steal to kill and to destroy but Jesus said I have come that you may have life that means you may have the glory that was stolen from you and have it how more abundantly the devil stole that glory from Adam and Eve but in this dispensation God is restoring the glory back to us once we give our lives to Christ so in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 the Bible says for all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God 
for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, if we were not made in the glory of God, why would we have fallen short of the glory? Did you get that? Because we were made in the glory of God, sin made us to fall, just like Adam and Eve, like I read to you in Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. The moment they sinned, they fell short of the glory of God. So previously before then, they were operating in the same level of glory, just like God. Because God said in Genesis 1.26, God said, let us make man in our own image, in our own glory, in the same level of glory, in the same level of glory. God never made anything like man. God took his time to make man. If you notice, when it was time for God to make man, it was the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and God took came together to make man when it came to the heavens God just spoke it but when it came to man he didn't speak man he created man Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 the Bible says that and God made man out of the dust of the ground did you see that he took his time he formed man he took his time to invest everything he had in man he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That breath right there is the very essence of God, the very presence of God, the very nature of God. That breath is the very glory of God. So when man was made, man was made in the image and the glory of God. You have been made in the glory of God. And in the name of Jesus, anything that has stolen your glory, anything that has tampered with your glory, in this dispensation, I decree in the name of Jesus, restoration is coming back. Amen. Somebody should say a living amen. amen. The devil knew very well that Jesus came to restore the glory man lost in the garden, so he tried to tempt him him to tempt Jesus with his stolen temporary glory the devil only had a temporary glory oh my goodness all the glory he had stolen from Adam and Eve was just temporary he was just temporary and in this 40 days of glory my prayer is that you would desire to see the glory of God because listen when the glory of God comes everything that pertains to life and godliness becomes your portion Matthew chapter 4 from verse 8 to 10 Matthew chapter 4 from verse 8 to 10 the Bible says that again the devil took him Jesus up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and their glory so that means the devil has some form of glory the glory he stole from Adam and Eve he still had it but that glory is a temporary glory are you following me he knows that that glory is going to be taken away from him once we come into the realization we come into the actualization we come into the revelation of knowing who we are in Christ Jesus we take back that glory so the devil took Jesus into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and he said to Jesus, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Please bear, hear me here. Now this lockdown is fighting worship. One of the devil's number one strategy is for God's people never to worship. That's why most of them, one of the most powerful time of victory in the life of every believer is a time of worship. Because listen, Genesis Psalm 22 verse 3, the Bible says that God inhabits 
the, the worship, the praises of his people. Whenever we worship God, God comes down to tabernacle. When we pray, God sends the answers through his angels. But when we worship, God doesn't send his angels. God sent himself. Glory be to God. God sent himself to come and tabernacle in your midst. That is why worshiping God is important. In this season that we are living in, be careful who you give your worship to. That's why Jesus said, if you don't worship me, I will raise up the stones. I will raise up the rocks and they are going to worship me. Please understand this. Your worship in this time is very important. Don't allow anything or anyone to steal that which belongs to God from you. So the devil said to Jesus, and all these things I will give you if you will worship me. If you worship me. The devil just wanted Jesus to fall down and worship him so that he can take the next level of gl the glory. And if Jesus had done that, that said, mankind would have been doomed for life. We would have been doomed for life. But the devil is a liar. We are coming into a season of greater glory. The Bible says that the glory of the latter house shall be greater. We are coming into the season of the greater glory. It's your season of greater glory. I want you to be expectant this morning because God is going to do some great and mighty things in your life. So verse 10 of Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says that then Jesus said unto Satan, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Oh, glory be to God. You shall worship the Lord your God. Did you see that? That's why even the, 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 the three Hebrew boys, when Nebuchadnezzar read an image for them to worship, they said to Nebuchadnezzar, No, 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 not here. Not here, not here. We cannot worship any graven image. We cannot worship any golden image. We don't give our worship to money. We don't give our worship to man. We don't give our worship to images. We give our worship to the only true God. He is the only one who deserves our worship. Glory be to God. He is the only one who deserves your worship. And wherever you are today, my prayer is that God will exalt himself in your worship. Whatever challenges you are going through, by the time we finish with today's service, the glory of God will be seen in that situation. The glory of God will overshadow your body. I don't know what sickness is in your body, but when the glory of God overshadows you, like the present, like the angel of God said, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, Mary. And when the Holy Spirit overshadows you, he takes absolute control over everything that's in your mind from the crown of your head to the soles of your body. And today is somebody's day of visitation. I said today is somebody's visitation. It's your visitation with an encounter with the glory of God. When the glory of God comes, he comes to overshadow you and no sickness can dwell in the temple of God. Your body is the temple of God. Your body belongs to God. It doesn't belong to any sickness or any diseases. And right now, as I'm preaching, as I'm teaching right now, the power of God is present and healing you in your houses and healing you in your offices and healing you in your cars wherever you are in that airplane going on holiday listening to this message in that airline the glory of God is overshadowing you I decree over your life today that you will not die you will live to declare the glory of the Lord write this down the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ restored us back to our original state of glory. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ restored us back to our original state of glory. Revelation chapter 5 from verse 11 to 12. Revelation chapter 5 from verse 11 to 12. I read this is then I looked 
and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures, the elders, the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. And look at what they were saying. They saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive, number one, power, to receive, number two, riches, to receive, number three, wisdom, to receive, number four, strength, to receive, number five, honor, to receive, number six, glory, and to receive, number seven, blessing. Seven things Jesus was slain for you to receive. Jesus doesn't need these things. Are you following me? In heaven, you don't need power. In heaven, you don't need riches. In heaven, you don't need wisdom. In heaven, you don't need strength. In heaven, you don't need honor. In heaven, you don't need glory. And in heaven, you don't need blessing. Here on earth, we need these seven potent forces here on earth so listen Jesus Christ when he died and he resurrected triumphantly on the third day the Bible says that Jesus said I have the keys of life he took the keys he took the glory that Satan stole from Adam and Eve Jesus took the glory and restored it back unto man he restored it back unto us. Jesus gave us back that glory. Hallelujah. And from today, these seven blessings will be made manifested in your life. From today, you'll be walking in power. From today, you'll be walking in riches. From today, you'll be walking in wisdom. From today, you'll have supernatural strength. From today, you will be honored. From today, the glory of God will be evident in your life. From today, you'll come into the manifest blessings of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Somebody say a good amen. amen. Write this down. After the cross, Christians now need to understand that we were called to function in the glory of God. We have now been called to function in the glory of God. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. We have now been called to function where? In the glory of God. That's where you belong. So the Bible says, as it's according to Second um, Peter chapter 1 verse 3. It says, according to his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory. The King James Version says, he has called us to glory. Did you see that? He has called us by glory or he has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4, it says, by, by which whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these you might become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Glory be to God. So we have been called to glory. You know, usually uh, people say when somebody dies, they say Christians will say we have the person has been called to glory. No, that is not being called to glory. Right here on earth, in your walk and in your daily walk, you have been called to glory. You are not supposed to die before you experience the glory of God. It's time to manifest the glory of God here on earth. Listen, when you're operating in the glory of God, wherever you walk around, wherever you go to, sickness and diseases bows. Wherever you go, when you're operating in the glory of God, when demons and, and devils see you, they tremble and they fall. Why? Because the glory of God is evident in your life. 
just like Moses. When Moses cried and said, Lord, show me your glory. After 40 days and 40 nights, when he came down, the children of God, the children of Israel could not see his face because the glory of God was so evident. Are you following what I'm saying? Romans chapter 8 from verse 28 to 30. Romans chapter 8 from verse 28 to 30. The Bible says, and we know. Oh, somebody say, and we know. And we know that all things, not some things, all things work together to those who love God. All together, work to, uh, all things work together for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For he, whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. That word image of his son there also represents the same image you and I were made in by God that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30 is key. It says, Moreover, whom he predestined, those these also he called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Somebody say amen to them. You and your family have come into your season of glorification. There is no toiling in the glory zone. Therefore, I decree over you today, your days of toiling are over. Your days of struggling are over. Your days of hand to mouth are over. God will restore your joy in this season. God will restore your dignity one more time. God will restore your health to you one more time. God will restore your family to you in the name of Jesus. I decree over you in this season of the glory, you will have an encounter with the goodness of God. God will surprise you in this season. You thought that 2020 has been a bad year for you, but I've come to declare unto you that in this season of the glory, God is able to restore the wasted years. God is able to restore the wasted years. Everything you have lost in terms of revenue, in terms of resources, in terms of materials, in terms of properties, in this season of the glory, God will restore them unto you a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Moses encountered the glory of God. Moses encountered the glory of God in an unusual way. And let's go and quickly look at what we can learn from his encounter before we close. Hallelujah. Exodus. Exodus chapter 24 from verse 12. <coughs> Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 24 from verse 12 to 18. I read it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me into the mount. It's somebody's time to come up. Amen. You've been in Lodiba for so long. You're about to come up. I said, This week you will be honored. Amen. You are watching me, somebody you were disgraced at your workplace, somebody wrote evil things about you, you were disgraced, but in this week, this week, God is about to restore you. Amen. God is about to restore your glory. God is about to cause you to come up. Amen. Somebody, your family has tempered with your marriage, but in this season, God's glory is about to overshadow your marriage. Amen. God is restoring back to you that husband. Amen. God is restoring to you your wife. God is restoring your family back to you in the name of Jesus. So God said to Moses, come up, come up to me into the mount and be, and be there. And I'll give thee tables of stone and the law 
and the commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. Verse 13. So Moses arose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God, and he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Indeed, Aaron and Hare are with you. If any man has a difficulty, let him go to them. Then Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. That's powerful. And a cloud did what? Covered the mountain. Verse 16, the Bible says, Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai. That should be your prayer. That the glory of God will rest upon you. The glory of God will rest upon this commission. The glory of God will rest upon the global members of this commission. The glory of God will rest upon our online services. In every service that we gather, we want to see the glory of God. You see, when the glory of God comes, some of you are watching right now, there's so much power coming through this service to your house and you are crying. You don't know why you can't stand still. That is the glory of God. You are wondering what is it in your house. The atmosphere in your house is changed. That is the glory of God. The glory of God came and rested on Mount Sinai. The Bible says that and the cloud covered it for how many days? For six days. And on the seventh day, God called Moses out of the midst of the glory. My God, may God call you out of the midst of this glory. In this season of his glory, may God call forth your name. May your name be mentioned in high places. May God go ahead of you in this season in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you have been put to shame, may the glory of God turn things around for you. I'm telling you, this glory that is coming is not just an individual glory. It's not just a family glory. It's not just a corporate glory. It's a national glory. It's a continental glory. I see the glory of God restoring continents back to their state of influence in the name of jesus i see presidents who have been put to shame your economies are not working but in this season i declare that the glory of god overshadow your economy the glory of god overshadow your life in the name of jesus and within the next seven days you begin to see a change in the economy your economy will begin to grow you, your 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 resources will begin to grow. Your infrastructures will begin to move smoothly in the mighty name of Jesus. And many nations are going to come and find out how you are doing it. And when they come and find out, let them know that this is the glory of God. Hallelujah. Verse 17. The Bible says that, And the sight of the glory of God was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. Do you see what happens when the glory of God shows up? The sight of the glory of God is like a consuming fire. May that be your encounter from henceforth. Any demonic plan of the devil to destroy you and your family may they see nothing but the glory of God may they only see the glory of God the Bible says that in the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel so shall it be for you from today Verse 18, and Moses went into the midst of the cloud. Oh, I love this. And Moses went where? Into the midst of the cloud. And he got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Now, when the Bible says that Moses went into the midst of the cloud, it that is talking about Moses went into the glory. He went into the glory. Hallelujah. Now, in Moses' day, Moses could not see the glory. 
But we currently, we don't have to see the glory. We live in the glory. Because God made you and I to display his glory. What a glorious God we serve. What a glorious God we serve. Finally, finally, the disciples saw the glory Moses could not see. The disciples of Jesus saw the glory of God that Moses was crying for. In Exodus 33 verse 18, for God to show him. They saw it. Peter, James, and John saw the glory. Finally, as we get ready to close, Matthew chapter 17 from verse 1. We're going to read it quickly and then we'll pray. Matthew chapter 17 from verse 1 to 8. The Bible says that now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up into a high mountain by themselves. And there was and he was transfigured before them. That's a glory. When the glory of God shows up, you cannot remain the same. Everything around you from top to bottom changes. I remember many years ago in my early days of Christian, my walk with the Lord, when I gave my life to Christ, probably in my first or second year of giving my life to Christ, I had only one, one jacket one shirt and one trouser and one shoe that I wore to church. And I wore that one shirt, one trouser, one whatever to church for years. And then one day, the shirt I was washing, the shirt and then it torn. We, I call it wash and wear. You have to wash it and wear it. And then it got torn. And then when it got torn, guess what happened? I had to cut it and make it a short sleeve. Now, every day before I go to church, I'll lay those clothes on the bed and I'll lay my hands on it and I'll say, Lord, let your glory come upon this clothes. Because it's one cloth, and all I had was the same for years, wearing the same to church, Sunday after Sunday. And now, when I started praying the glory of God upon my clothes, guess what? When I get to church, the same people I congregate with after service will say, "Ha, ah, you are wearing every day. You are wearing new suits. Now it's the same one shirt, same one tie, same one jacket, same trouser, same shoe. But guess what? For me, it was the same, but in their eyes, it was different." It was transfigured. That is what the glory of God does. When the glory of God comes, he changes everything. He changes everything. So the Bible says that, and Jesus was transfigured before them. He was transformed before them. You can't be walking in the glory of God and not experience transfiguration. It is not possible. You can't be in the glory of God and be the same. When you are in the glory of God, you are transfigured inside out. So Jesus was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun. Oh, this is powerful. That should tell you the level of brightness that Jesus was exuberating. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to him, appeared to them talking to him. Then Peter, the talkative, answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us uh, to be here. If you wish, let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While Peter was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and they were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, do not be afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one 
but Jesus. Glory be to God. That is what happens when you are in the glory. When you are in the glory of God, everything around you changes. I pray for you today that your the glory of God will overshadow you in an unusual way in the name of Jesus. I pray for you today in this season of our 40 days of glory. May nothing be your desire but the glory of God. Let your daily prayer be, Lord, show me your glory. Just like Jesus was transfigured in this season of the 40 days of glory, everything around you will be transfigured. Your face will be transfigured. Right now, in the name of Jesus, new body parts are being restored now. New limbs are being restored. Every growth in your body is removed now. Every defect in your body is removed now and it is made perfect. Your body is made perfect. Every form of weakness in your body is coming to an end in the name of Jesus. My prayer for you today is that God will show you his glory in an unusual way in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, I want to pray with you wherever you are if you have not given your life to Jesus you cannot see the glory of God if you are not born again I would like to pray with you so wherever you are say with me Lord Jesus I come to you just as I am forgive me of my sins write my name in your book of life may I save you all the days of my life from today I have decided to follow you no turning back no turning back in Jesus name if you have prayed that prayer you are now born again you are a child of God from today the glory of God will be seen in your life I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for all these precious ones who have given their lives to you. Preserve them till the day of your coming. May they never backslide. May they never go back. May their heart desire be for you. Holy Spirit, help them. Strengthen them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want us to take just a few minutes and pray and pray for the glory. Amen. Why don't you just open your mouth and pray before we close. Pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your glory change my struggles into success. Let your glory change my struggles into a success story. Every struggle is coming to an end. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, ask God to change your your struggles. The glory of God can change your struggles into a success story. In the name of Jesus, just for three minutes, we're praying for three minutes, for the glory of God, for the glory of God to come into your life, to change everything. Pray and ask God, Father, in the name of Jesus, Cause me to operate in your glory from today, thereby causing me to walk in supernatural favor. Come on, open your mouth wherever you are. Ask God to show you his glory. Ask God, ask God, ask God. Open your mouth, open your mouth and pray. Ask God for his glory, to show you his glory. You are coming into a season of glory. No more struggle. That ministry is no longer going to struggle. When the glory of God comes, He changes everything. When the glory of God comes, He changes everything. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Come on, open your mouth and pray. When the glory of God comes, He makes all things easy. He makes them easy. The struggle is coming to an end. Lord, show us your glory. Lord, let me experience your glory. Let my family experience your glory. Let my wife experience your glory. Let our children experience your glory. Let them move from glory to glory. 
the path of the just shining brighter and brighter. Let them move from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory. glory. In the name of Jesus, let them move from glory to glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh yes, oh yes, ask God, ask God to show you his glory. Ask God to show you his glory. One more, one more minute, one more minute. Pray, pray. Don't keep your mouth shut. Pray, pray, pray. Ask God to show you his glory. Your glory, Lord. Your glory, Lord. His glory can change your story. His glory can change everything. It can change your struggles into a success story. Pray now, pray now. Pray now, pray now. Pray now the glory, the glory, the glory. When the glory of God comes, he he, he changes everything. The glory, the glory. Come on, don't keep your mouth shut. Pray now, pray. Ask God to show you his glory. In the name of Jesus, Lord, show me your glory. In my marriage, show me your glory. In my children's life, show me your glory. In my business, show me your glory. Ask God to show you his glory. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Ask God to show you his glory. 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 Lord, show me your glory. Lord, show me your glory. Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Oh, your glory. Let it be tangible. Let it transform everything. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We honor you, Lord. Thank you for answers to all our prayers. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance knowing that Christ in you is the hope of glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord give you peace on every side. May he cause you to be the head and not the tail. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that you are now in the dispensation and in the season of God's glory for your life. We love you. God bless you. We'll gather again in our second service, third service, fourth service, fifth service for the day, and you will be blessed. Don't go away. Stay on there. We'll be coming back to you shortly in Jesus' name. Amen.